sort of a Neo Geo X uh, revisited or part two, whatever you want to call it. Um, basically, uh, as the, the year went by after the Neo Geo X was released, uh, Tomo tried to have some support for it and even released a firmware update that really didn't do anything useful. Um, being frustrated with that and along with the fact that uh, it seemed like whenever I plugged in my Neo Geo X, if I hadn't played it for a couple of days, uh, the battery would be completely depleted so that way I'd have to leave it on for like 20 minutes just in order for it to get a minimum charge uh, just to even play. Uh, just getting fed up with all that. Uh, basically, um, what I had to do is take things into my own hands. Now what we have here basically is the Neo Geo X base console. From the face value of it, uh, I mean it's the same thing. I haven't done anything special to it. Everything as is as it was from the factory, but on the inside I have put a Raspberry Pi. Now I did some modifications to the, the base console in order for this to even work with it. Uh, basically what I had to do was uh, uh, disconnect the uh, micro USB that was here because basically that the micro USB that pops out of here runs along the side of the case to the front here to these two USB ports which is essentially a two port uh, USB hub and uh, the weird thing about it is is from the back of the system back here um, is where the AC adapter plugs in on the back of the system well the power and the ground run all the way along the side over to here to the switch uh, where the power then from the switch would go to power the hub part and then of course the ground would just continue to the hub also uh, what I had to do was I disconnected the micro USB cable from the hub as well as the power from the hub and ran the power to an old uh, micro USB phone charger cable that I had laying around uh, just ran the power and ground to to this and that's what these two cables are here two wires whatever uh, so these are connecting directly to the power that comes in through the back of here well the power actually comes from the switch anyways so then in order to use the USB ports all I did was uh, take an old keyboard and cut the the USB cable off of it and uh, I soldered the four wires that go from the USB cable to the USB hub where the micro USB cable would normally connect basically turning it from a micro USB and to a regular USB uh, then on the back of this system I and mean, if you notice here uh, the AV out is like a little headphone jack type deal so basically what that is it's a um, like a, they call it a four position or four conductor um, uh, 3.5 millimeter jack and basically what that four conductor means is one is left audio one is right audio one is composite video and one is ground so basically uh, I took the positive and negative or the, the positive and negative from the composite video uh, put that in with the uh, the composite video and the ground and the the left and right audio I wired those to that and then grounded them as well so they're connected to that AV port in the back here. The mini HDMI is, I haven't done anything with that. I mean the, the HDMI port is over on this side anyways and I don't think there's enough room to really do anything with it. Plus I'm just hooking it up to a CRT uh, so you know it uh, I don't have HDMI on a CRT but anyways um, even as much space as there is in here to hold this uh, with how much these stick out all over the place uh, it seems like this is the only way uh, to get this to go in. I mean, I can't move it anywhere. And I was actually worried that I wouldn't even be able to get it to fit in there. But it fits in there nice and snug. So you don't have to worry about any anything getting smashed or anything like that. So it fits in there good. Uh, closes nicely. And uh, what I'll do is I'll show you what this thing looks like all hooked up. Okay, so here we are with it all hooked up. So all I have to do is just hit the switch on the system and it turns right on. So here we go, goes into the boot sequence. 
and then uh, right afterwards it goes into a little movie to cover up all this uh, text. right into the menu. So then we just grab the controller right here and just go through the menu pick a game. Close it right up. Just like normal. And on the controller basically you hit select and it gives you a coin or credit whatever and push start just like normal and all four buttons work and it's just like Neo Geo X or Neo Geo or anything like that to get out of the game you just hit start and select at the same time and goes back to the menu. Uh, going through these games you might notice some stuff that's not made by SNK or a Neo Geo game. Uh, that's because uh, if you notice up in the upper left hand corner it says Neo Geo MVS and Capcom. Because uh, the Final Burn Alpha emulator basically will run uh, CPS 1 and 2 games too. So I mean here we go. Got Street Fighter 03 or zero, I don't remember which one this is. Yeah, Street Fighter Zero. I got a bunch of other Street Fighters on here, but I mean it runs them perfect. Uh, the only problem is the uh, Neo Geo X controller, or Neo Geo controller for that matter, only has uh, four buttons. So what that means is you can't really play Street Fighter uh, to the way you want. Let me point out something that was uh, a big, uh, pretty much a big no-no. Uh, when they first released the Neo Geo X, uh, the first thing everyone noticed as far as flaws go right off the bat was the uh, the lack of V-Sync. And uh, basically what you'd end up with is a lot of screen tearing on the uh, horizontal movements. Um, I don't remember if it was so much on the, uh, the vertical movements, but definitely on the horizontal. But uh, we'll go through the same demo that I went through uh, on one of my previous videos. And uh, right when it goes into the demo, you'll see uh, right here, as soon as it starts moving, it's nice and smooth. No jitters, no frame drop, and most of all, no screen turn. So this has the V-Sync enabled on it. So that works really good. Uh, one thing to take note of if you want to do something like this, if first off, if you want to do something like this, I'll, I can make another video and show you exactly where I soldered everything up to. Uh, but one thing to take note of, uh, although it is convenient to uh, just uh, have the power switch on the Neo Geo X console, uh, turning it on is fine. Uh, however, turning it off can be a little tricky because uh, the, since the Raspberry Pi is essentially a computer, uh, you want to kind of park it before you uh, turn it off. Now, I don't do that, um, but uh, if you do like I do, basically what you have to do, be careful. Uh, make sure it's not loading anything while you, uh, when you decide to turn it off. Make sure that everything's loaded and it's uh, basically in a uh, kind of like a stationary setup because uh, if anything's loading while you turn it off, then you can potentially uh, corrupt the, the uh, SD card that's in there. So. Um, basically, uh, if you want to use the on-off switch, uh, turning it off is fine, not turning it off. Just make sure you're either back to the main menu or a game's fully loaded and not doing anything. So, uh, that's one thing to take note of. Other than that, uh, really happy to finally get some decent use out of the uh, Neo Geo X, even though it's not really a Neo Geo X anymore. Uh, it's just cool to have it in uh, all the games in one spot and looking nice and clean and professional. 
anyways, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions and you want to try and do this yourself, I'll be more than happy to help or probably even post a video on showing what I had to do to get this to work. Alright, anyways, uh, thanks for watching.